Hi guys, really happy to be here. Um, I have a background in uh, business related to the marketing, so I'm my partner Alfredo. That's why we focus on the uh, topic which is also related to the marketing. Uh, and uh, this is eye tracking. I will talk a little bit more about what it is and how it can be, and actually what what we've done during this project. So. Uh, I will start with the problems that business have in uh, publishing the advertisement. You actually never know when we talk about physical advertisement, for example, if users even look at your ad or it's kind of invisible for them. Uh, also, you can tell is uh, users uh, see your advertisement compared to the other ads, like on the second picture when you have lots of different advertisements. Some of them you will never take a look of. Some of them are super catchy. And uh, as a business owner, you are interested in um, track it or predict it or understand, is it going to work? Should I spend money on putting this ad? Uh, also, the same comes to the design when you're thinking about a new product and uh, you're thinking about design. Uh, in some cases and in some industries, design is uh, crucial. It's very important. Uh, and uh, the sales and depends on that. So before you uh, make a release of your product, you should know uh, I do what, uh, sorry how many products do uh, you can sell with this design or can I make a better design that will catch eyes better uh, compared to other products also compared just with uh, random objects uh, does this design is catchy when somebody see it on street or somewhere uh, and the solution of that is uh, eye tracking it's called eye tracking uh, it's a scene that you can actually track the eyes of the users, the duration, the points, what user watch first, second, uh, for how long, when he stops paying attention to the picture and starts randomly uh, like watch the random points. So on these pictures from previous slides, you can see the results of eye tracking of the real humans and how they look at these objects and these pictures. And also, uh, eye tracking is applied not only for the physical advertisement, but also for the digital ads. So, for example, uh, you can track uh, the buttons or some actions in the apps, which is also important. I think you know that some companies have even departments that are uh, paying attention of putting some button 10 pixels up and it can raise conversion in 1%, which will bring you like a million dollars, etc. So this is a important stuff. The same as a website, the same as a, just a digital advertisement. So you can see here how, how it should look like, how the tracking should look like for the business owner and how it should actually look. So users watch more uh, like a slogan or a pretty woman's face but not on the product exactly. And you can probably sell the idea of uh, paint here in red, but they can't remember the name of the brand, which is bad even if they focus on this advertising. So the eye tracking is a possibility to understand this. And uh, the way it works right now is um, if you are a businessman, you go to the marketing agency and ask them for eye tracking for your potential designs of advertisement or product package or other stuff. They form a focus group, with at least 20 people, uh, sometimes more. They track all of them with uh, special eye tracker devices, the glasses with a camera inside, so they can um, just record your eyes and understand which points you are looking for. And then uh, they manually analyze the results and make a heat map on uh, points that users look more. Uh, also, they do a map on which points they look first, etc. And the problem with this approach is, of course, that it costs a lot. Uh, it takes a lot of time to form this group. Also, after you have results, probably you want to test it again when you make some edits into your design. So it takes twice a lot of time. Uh, and also, it requires too many manual works. And also, from the uh, like not super professional people, like a focus group, it's just watching the, the pictures and that's it. So our idea is to change it using the machine learning. We try to make a model which will create eye tracking, uh, just predict eye tracking from the data science model. Yeah, uh, and I'm glad to present you eye tracker AI. This is the name that we figured out yesterday, <laughs> and uh, this is the app or or the website that when you can uh, upload the picture and in seconds receive the results is eye tracking of the potential users will look like a prediction of the eyes of the users on these pictures. 
Uh, so I will give the mic to Alfredo to describe it more in the technical way how we done this. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Alfredo. I'm going to go a bit deeper into the project, what was the approach that we decided to go with this project. So when it comes to a data science project, obviously the first pass is to get the data. We obviously didn't have some fancy glasses to, to generate some data, but we started looking on, on Google. There are like some universities that have done like similar projects before, and we get like some, uh, there is a project that MIT did like some years ago, that is kind of related, so we decided to use this, this data set. This data set has uh, as an input, has like 1,000 pictures, and as an output has like the patterns of between people of, on any of these 1,000 pictures. So taking that into consideration, the next step was how we were going to upload this. So still we have like, was like the, the pictures in one side, and in the other side we have like the data set, it was like they with the picture, uh, user, to arrays for the X and the Y. So we decided how are we going to treat this? Like the first option would be like, okay, we have like the one picture in the input and an output, we could predict like both the picture and the pattern. That was like the first option. The second option was just uh, to predict the, um, like the pattern. And, and yeah, so we decided that um, it was easy for us just to go only on the on the pattern. We also decided that it would make more sense because we change the color to the original blue points to black points because we need like more contrast, black and white. So we will have like better results. Um, the next step was which model are we gonna take, which architecture? So we decided to use like a unit architecture. Why do we, we decide to use this this architecture? So Basically, this architecture is what is what designed from the University of Freiburg and they created to solve like um, image segmentation within, within the area of biomedical. Okay, so basically, like the problem was similar to one, we did, like the prediction was like similar. This was one reason, and the other reason is that for using this architecture, you need a lot of data to to train it. So that was okay. So we find that it was a good match for us. So when it comes to the so when it comes to the results, there are like many ways to, to measure the results. So we have into the table we have like the trivial distance, regular cross entropy, and size similarity. Um, at the beginning we didn't know which one to, to choose, but we did a bit research and we said like um Euclidean distance was like the standard. Um, this was what we found on, on Google, so we decided to go with that. The model accuracy we have is like 53%. But we can see that it's a, it's a good starting point for the data that we have. Well, we have seen like some universities, they have achieved like up to 80% during these, these similar models. So it's something that we we able to achieve. How do we plan to achieve that accuracy? Okay, so there are like several things that we could do. So for example, like the first one, we would like to get some, some data. We have seen that they are like, other data sets on, on Google from other universities that come on like single projects. So we could use that as well. We should have to normalize, put it all like same input as the beginning. Uh, the second one would be like to test different models. There is one model actually is like open source from Facebook. It's called Dino and it's also used for image segmentation. This one seems to be good. So it's also that something that we would like to try. Uh, another thing is that we were thinking about doing image um, augmentation, like changing, like flipping the picture, changing the brightness, all these things. But we were not sure how would this affect the the, uh, the results. I mean, for example, when you flip a picture, we don't we are not sure that um, the person is going to look to the same points. So this was something that for us was that we, we didn't have it clear. But for sure, we would like something that we would like to test in, in the future. Um, as a final step, we would like to transform like, the final version into a more user-friendly product. 